please go ahead and get started then. All right. Boy, this thing was loud. Let me start by turning it down. Start. There. That's a little better. Um, all right. Well, today we're going to do kind of an introductory meeting into the Faith Life Bible Study app or the Bible Study. Uh, but to get off a couple things uh, right off the bat so that we don't have too many questions. Um, oh, I know what the issue is. It's always a good thing. Daddy, I guess you're saying you're away. There it is. All right. We're going to study the faith life. If you get a few things off right the bat, here's where you find it. All right. Everything is interconnected. All right. So you have the Bible, which is at www.faithlifebible.com. You have the community, which is basically a social media type site at www.faithlife.com. All right. You will need to create an account. Everything, once you create that account, will be synced up. Now, depending on what device you have, they have the three major players, and that's what they support. They have Android, they have Apple, and they do have Kindle Fire, which is the Amazon marketplace. So if you have a, a, a device that uses the Amazon marketplace, uh, they have it on there as well. Those are the big three that they have. They do not have BlackBerry as far as I can tell. All right, so now that you know where everything is, let's, well, let's figure out what it is. We're going to talk first about the phone app. I'm going to break it into two sections. We're going to talk about the tablet app, mainly the bigger tablet app, and we're going to the phone app. I'm going to show you how to use, in brief, the phone app to begin with. I do have a slight complaint with the phone app. It's a little crunch. There's a, there's a lot of material that's trying to pack into a lot of into a little bit of space. But as you can see, it is maneuverable. Uh, another thing to note as we go on, whenever we're using my phone, you're going to see some things that simply will not appear on yours. That is because the company that makes this, the company that is producing this, is called Logos. Logos is a massive, massive, massive Bible software company, of which I have money invested in some of their software. Because I have that, this app connects with my account. And it unlocks all kinds of stuff, mainly because, well, I spent money on it and I purchased it. So, so you might see some stuff there, and you, when you get to your app, you'll say, I didn't have that book. Well, that's why. I, I have it uh, in my collection. So let's just get started. Here's a typical phone app page. You'll notice the app is actually located right there. Uh, it is fake light. It has that little picture of a leaf right there. Uh, that's what it is. Once you, pop, once you open it, this is the, the view that you get. Um, there is actually something you can't see it. I'm going to highlight it here in a second. Look, my laser pointer is there. But there's like a, a little, a little bar right there. You can't quite see it. Now, as you look at the app, a couple things to notice. First, you have this top section. The top section is going to give you all kinds of things. It's going to tell you what Bible you're reading. If you have a reading list, which is one thing that we will be using uh, with this. It will tell you where you are at in terms of your reading list. In this case, you can see it says Star Reading, June 3rd, 2013, and then it says Matthew. That's because I started a reading plan earlier and, uh, and then have switched gears. We're going to be talking about that, though, in a little bit. The next thing that we're going to talk about is that. I don't know if you saw that. It's a little green thing. The little green balloon shows you that there is a note. That note is something that the community writes. This is why I say it's all interconnected. If you are on the Faith Life community and you are connected to a group and you say you write something about that passage, a little green box pops up on everybody else's Bible. And it alerts you that they wrote a note on that passage. You see, it's all interconnected depending on uh, what you write and what you don't. So the first section 
is the Bible. That's, that is the actual biblical text. Now, if you look at the top, we're using the up here. It says L-E-B. That's the Lexham English Bible. It is a fairly literal translation. I have done little investigation other than that. This is a free Bible that you can get with the, with the app, so that's the one we'll be using until something else becomes free and I like it better. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. The next part is the notes. Those are the study notes. This is the study notes for the Faith Life Study Bible. This is what it is. This is what it looks like. We're going to look at this a little bit more in depth, but we'll look at that later. Right now, I'm just going to give you an introduction to the phone app. Now, if you have an Apple phone, if you have an Apple, like an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4, and you download this app, oh, I'm actually highlighting the, the, the projector is not quite perfect. There, this is where I said it. There is a little thing right over here. You can actually kind of faintly see a line right there. You can actually put your thumb on that and adjust. So you can adjust it so that you see less of the scriptures and more of the notes are more of the scriptures and then less of the notes. You can actually adjust that up and down depending on what you would prefer. And I, I just highlighted it even though you can't see it. Uh, so, so there. Oh, there it is. But if you have an Apple phone, what you will want to do next is you want to actually. This is why I need to review my material. I, I forgot that I teach you how to highlight first. If you were to take your thumb and hold it on the word the, this little thing would appear. This is a tool that you can use, uh, it gives you a couple of suggestions. One thing, though, is if you put your thumb on that little blue piece here, we'll go back so you can see, maybe. If you put your thumb right there and move it, you can move that part, you can scroll it over, you can actually do things like copy, you can do a search, you can write a note on that passage, you can highlight or you can remove certain things like just highlighting and so on and so forth. You can go through a plethora of options. Now, when you hit highlight, which is the one I'm going to well, look at now. This box appears. And you have all kinds of fun little options. You can add emphasis, you can put swirly lines, you can do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, you've got a little couple couple options there. Uh, I just did typical maroon or red color. Um, that is what I was eventually going for. If you have an Apple phone, uh, this is the button you are going to hit. If you have an Android phone, you're going to want to hit your settings button. All right, if you hit that, this pops up. This is your resource manager. Your resource manager, you can scroll through. If you just notice that, that right there is, is basically showing you how many pages that you have in the first section. The first section, as you can see by a little lens, is just the search function. But you can scroll through it, and you can see some of the resources that you have. You have Bibles, you have study notes, you have the infographics, you have maps, photos, videos, and you have the Alexa Bible Dictionary. The videos we're not really going to cover much today, uh, but you can kind of explore some of those on your own. They don't have a lot yet, but they're uploading them. Uh, they're uploading them as we speak. They're continuing to upload stuff onto the system. Most of the videos are simply there to give you an idea of what stuff looks like. Right? So you mentioned, for instance, yeah, for instance, for BBS, you mentioned something happens in Athens. Well, they might have a video of Athens. The video will be about a minute long, and there won't be any sound with the exception of just the regular sound of wind blowing and so forth. And they'll simply take a video camera and they'll show you parts of Athens. They have all kinds of photos of, of Holy Land places as well. They have a couple of maps. The dictionary is pretty good. Infographics, I'm actually going to show you kind of what that is in a little bit. But you can see that's your list of resources. You can go to your favorites. Um, this is basically some of your favorite books that you use, uh, so on and so forth. Your history, that little green thing right there, that tells you whether or not you have this resource downloaded. 
I have them downloaded. So they're actually on my phone. I don't need the internet in order to use them. Um, but if you don't want to do that, if you don't have space, well, you can, you can just use them online. That's fine. Uh, now we're going to move up here to this section. The next section is the, the, next, the next page over would have just been another search bar. But now we're going to move up here. You can see there's a couple different things up there. And we're going to move to the next one, which is your daily readings tab. And that's going to look like this. Now, I, you can see I have a couple different uh, things up there. Some of these are devotionals that I didn't actually connect to, but they're, they're suggesting that I do connect to them. Um, the other one is the Matthew 1 through 4. That was a written, again, that's the, the reading I actually started, but had switched here since. Notice it will tell me I can do this with the group, and also notice that it tells me that it's overdue, which means I haven't done my reading yet. Um, I had this originally started for the, the first section to be done by June 3rd. So that's why this is uh, overdone. Originally, I wanted to have this meeting in about midway through May. That did not happen. So here we are. Um, all right, the next section is the My Faith Life. This is where the community aspect comes into the actual app with the Bible. Um, you can see this is just a general breakdown of your news feed. On Facebook, this would be considered kind of like your news feed as well. Now, you can hit something, though. You can hit that button. And that button will actually open up to the main Faith Life page. And this is where I'm going to end the phone demonstration. And I'm going to end it here uh, because I'm going to go into the tablet, and you can just see things from the tablet a lot better. Uh, because the tablet is a lot bigger, and it has more screen space. You could take your thumb and move over and see the actual Faith Life page and all that, and you can kind of, kind of do that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it's applicable, you can kind of maneuver around it. But, let's move to part two, shall we? Applets. Yay! All right, when you first open up, you'll immediately notice we have a lot more screen space. Um, just to kind of review, basically you can see everything we just covered. Uh, up here you see your resources. Again, there's five dots, so you can actually scroll through each of the five pages. Uh, I can tell you whether or not you downloaded that resource or not. It will also have the My Faith Life, which is what we just covered, and we will cover again in just a second. And it will have, again, here's your daily readings, and again, it tells me that I'm behind. Um, so, kind of generally see where it's at. Now, I'm going to hit that part again and move over and actually see the Faith Life. Now, this is actually on the iPad, uh, which I have logged into my wife's account. I did that on purpose. Um, and, and it really messes me up if I try to do my logos on, on the iPad and everything, and so that's just a whole different thing, uh, which you don't even need to worry about. Uh, you can see on here, she signed into two groups. You can kind of see that over to the side here. The St. Mark's Young Adults and the St. Mark's Lutheran Church. There is a St. Mark's Lutheran Church, uh, Church and Preschool page. Anybody can join that page. Anybody can be part of that page. Uh, the Young Adults is a little restricted right now. I am going to open it up. Uh, while we get people to kind of sign into it. But, uh, but anyway, this is generally what it looks like. A couple things to notice is right here you have your bar, and your bar is going to kind of be your general run through as far as what's going on. You have your about, you have your news, you have your calendar. All right? There's also members, you can look at other members, you can also look at documents. We can upload documents. Uh, onto a group page, and we can share them with one another. The community notes, it would actually be a listing of all the notes that are actually found on your Bible as well. So if I write a note on the Bible, it'll pop up in Amanda's community notes page. Next thing I want you to notice is the prayer section. This is one of the coolest features in the thing, and it's so simple. Anybody can add prayers, and it just adds it immediately. You can tell it whether you want to pray for it daily, weekly, monthly. You can have a start date, an end date. You can have all kinds of fun things. You can add a prayer, which is really nice as a group to actually be praying together as a community. The next thing you can add is group readings. Now, they are limited on your group readings. You can only pick from a certain list that they have pre-made. However, 
if you spend the gobs and gobs of money on their Bible software, oh wait, I did that. Uh, you can actually create your own group readings, and if you create your own group readings, you can kind of set your own pace. So guess what I get to do? I get to set our own group readings. So whatever we decide we want to read, I can create because I have the actual software. All right. This is the Bible in the tablet. This is what it looks like. Same thing all over again. Top part you can see is the scripture. Bottom part is the notes. Now we get a little bit more of a full view this time with the actual uh, with the actual page, which is what I want to kind of show to you. If you'll notice, at the end of several notes, there's these little plus things. See, there's a couple of them. Now, if you were to click on this, let's say we clicked on the Son of David, it'll open up a whole other section. Logos calls that tiers. Each set of notes can have up to three tiers. That's what I'm talking about right there. Each set of notes can have up to three tiers of notes, which means you might get at least one more of those plus signs if you can click and open up more notes. All right? Now, after that, you'll also notice something else on the bottom of the page. This is a picture. This is actually not a picture. This is what they call the infographics. This is what they're talking about. They have several of these. This is not the only design, but I'm going to show you this one because, well, it's on the first page. This is the life of Jesus, uh, infancy and early ministry. As you can see, it's just a pictorial timeline of Jesus' life and ministry. I'm not even going to go through this whole thing, but I am going to go through three pages of it. So you can see there are three pages, and it keeps going. This thing is several pages long. Now, there's other ones, other pictographs, that are just showing you examples of how big something might be. For instance, if you go out on the board, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the advertisements for this meeting actually depicts Ezekiel's altar, which was never actually built. It was only described in the Bible. But they actually give you the design of it, and then they put a little person on there to give you a scale of how big it roughly would be. So you can, so you can kind of see what is being discussed in that particular biblical passage. And this is what they call an infographic. So they have several different kinds. You can click through and see those. Now, if we go through some of the notes and we go a few passages up, uh, you might see a couple things. For instance, this doesn't really come through very well here, I've noticed, but... Uh, if, if you're actually using a tablet, you'll notice you'll actually notice that this is actually a gray area. It's depicting, it's talking about a person, Ruth, and so it's going to give you a little description of her. It'll do that in certain topics. But you'll also notice something else. Oh, I highlighted it. Um, you'll notice that right there. It says the genealogy of Jesus, and then it has, and then it has a lock next to it. That means it's a locked resource. Remember, this is a digital book company. They want to sell you books. They're going to give you options to purchase books. You can do so all you want. They're a great company. They're a big company. I would stand behind, stand behind them uh, uh, for the most part. Uh, I have a lot of books uh, in my own software. But, but this is what it's about. And again, depending on, on how many of these things that you have, some of these books might need to be unlocked and others won't be. Now another section that you'll see is uh, over here. This is the section of something of a resource that is unlocked, which means you can click on it. And that pops up. Now if you notice there's an arrow on the bottom of the page, you can, you can keep going. There's more than one page. And it's going to kind of talk about whatever topic it is that you happen to be looking into. So, there you go. There is a brief overview of the app, how it functions, how it works. Now, as with all things, we're going to talk about its use, its pros and its cons, because everything has pros and cons. So let's talk about it. First, let's talk about the pros. You have the ability to do a Bible study on a busy schedule. This is important, because this is part of, of what I want to use it for, right? We all have families, we all have lives that are outside of church, and for some of us that makes it very difficult to get to meetings, uh, especially if you're going to have a routine uh, Bible study. Sometimes it just doesn't function on, depending on what your schedule is. 
whether you put your children to bed before it's usually that time, or whether you're in college 400 miles away, sometimes you just can't make it to meetings, which is kind of the nice thing about this. And that kind of goes with the second part, too. You can do the Bible study in a group, even though you are not able to do that. So you can do it individually by yourself, or you can actually do it in a group. And you can kind of do both. Right? The community notes, the, the news feed page, uh, the prayer list, all of that keeps you somewhat connected with a group. Now, what are the cons with that? Well, you have a lack of social gathering and discussion. Social gathering and discussion are important parts of, of any Bible study. Uh, and even though you can kind of do a makeshift method of it, you still end up lacking a certain form of social gathering. Uh, that's a huge con. And the other one is you need a smart device or at least a computer that can get online to do it. That limits your audience. Uh, and that is unfortunate. However, the best way I've come up with so far. So uh, this, is, this is what I intend to do. This is how I plan on using it. Suggested structure. Uh, I'm going to start this primarily with my young adult uh, crew first. But in the future, it may expand and, and uh, go off in its own direction. Um, but that being said, it, the St. Mark's Lutheran Church and preschool page is always open, and I can start doing stuff with that as well. But at least for right now, the main, main focus for me is going to be with the young adults. We're going to do a follow-through with a reading plan and online study with monthly casual meetings if you can make them. That's what I intend to do. So I'll we'll start a reading plan, such as, for instance, how I started one already, reading through the Gospel of Luke through the summer. I already have the reading plan set up for the young adults. It's already there. You can actually go connect to it and start reading the first. It basically gives you a deadline. You have to read a certain amount by this date. In this case, it's Saturday. You have to read the first chapter of Luke. So it's not a whole lot of reading. Uh, couple minutes a day we could probably give you there with flying colors or five to ten minutes of actually just sitting and reading in one sitting would probably get you through it. Now that's just if you want to read it, if you want to study it, you can add notes. I've already added uh, one or two notes uh, onto that section. But then we'll meet on July 12th at my house and we'll do that for discussion and socializing. So you get kind of a gathering uh, environment and this is, this is kind of my overall plan. Uh, we're going to kind of see how it works and kind of go from there. Obviously, you know, once summer ends and the fall begins and people go away to college and, and life kind of gets busy again, we'll see how well this works. All right, any thoughts? I was amazed with that. I'm I know. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Did, did I have to tell any, do, I, do I have to tell anybody that the reason I'm doing it July 12th is because that's literally the only week in July I'm here? Because <laughs> I'm gone the first week of July and I'm, I'm gone the second second part for the convention, so I'll be gone. Yeah. Um, we have the app now on our. You mentioned. Our devices. However, I have it. It's just that I push the card over there and just set up. Yeah. Um, when they come, or I guess you say that has to be online, is it something that you can still have a study group of you can do it offline on your app, whatever you have on here? Once you download the resources, you can use the app offline. And then, so, yeah, then will it update notes out to groups? Well, mean, not online, because it can't. But but when you, okay, and then hold it in a queue that would go off the I, I honestly don't know. I haven't, I haven't tested that uh, well enough. I do know, however, that this is done through Logos. And basically, anytime you log into the app, and you, you, it, should, it syncs up everything. So it should, it should once you re-log into the app, it should sync up your notes. At least that's what I'm assuming, because that's what their other app does. But. And just to recap, I get my account set up, and then do I need to go to Facebook to get the St. Mark's page to, to connect? Or no, you should be able to search us out. Through this. Okay. You should be able to seek us out. This is completely separate from Facebook. Okay. So I am gonna I am gonna be putting an invite on there because, in my humble opinion, it is a little bit difficult to maneuver their searching. They need to fix that, but they haven't yet. So hey, okay, what are you gonna do? Um, 
One of the cons for this that I put in a review that I actually uh, uh, wrote a little while back uh, is that this is technically still a beta. Their community is technically still a beta. It's stable. It's good. It's a solid app. It's a solid community. What that means, though, for them is they're still putting stuff into it. And they're still kind of updating it as they go. Uh, they, got a couple, they got about five or six things, big things, that they're planning on rolling out at some point. Um, and, and they're still, I mean, even the prayer list that I showed you, that was just added like a month ago. They, they've been planning on doing it for a while, for a couple months, but then they finally were able to actually get it pushed through maybe a month or so ago. So, so yeah, this, I mean, this is, a, this is, they're still kind of upgrading and, and doing stuff to the app, and uh, there's still stuff that I'm looking forward to to see roll out kind of in the future. Um, but anyway, so that's what it is. But you don't need Facebook. But their search feature is a little, I don't know. I, I tried to do, because they technically, they went through, see this is also, low, this, this gives you a little bit of a, an idea of the scope of, of Logos. It's a huge, huge company. Um, Logos actually went through and made a page for every church in the United States. All right, I went and claimed that page, and then I changed the name a little bit because they had some, some issues with it, but everything else is right. Whenever I logged onto that page, it had our name, it had our address, and it had a couple details. Not, not a lot, but it just had a few things, like our phone number and stuff like that. Um, so I went and updated the page and uh, basically claimed it as our own. So you can find it. But like, if you type in Wausau, they'll give you a couple churches in Weston and some church out in like Mattswander or whatever. And uh, so, so you know, it's just like their searching feature is not the best. So I will be putting uh, a, a uh, our actual URL to the group page. I will be posting that on Facebook, but you don't have to have it. By any means. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, I'll be uh, pushing this along, and hopefully, we'll get a lot more people to kind of sign up and join our groups uh, because that'd be a lot more fun. So, we'll kind of do it from there. And. Uh, with that, I wanted to keep this meeting under a half an hour, which I did. So, <laughs> hooray! This meeting was live streamed. I will also put a link to that uh, probably on Facebook. I'll need to add it off at the beginning because there's like 10 minutes of space. Um, after that being said, anybody that wants to actually go and review some of the details that I pointed out here will be able to do it, and I will post a link to that on the Facebook page. It's fun just to get on there and click around and explore and, like, yeah. Sometimes I get frustrated with more my tablet to explode, but it, there's like there's so many cool things on there. I just I'm, I'm a Bible history nerd though, so <laughs> yeah. And this is this is a free this is a free resource, but only for a limited time. Uh, the the company the company logos uh, when they originally rolled this out, they were charging ninety dollars for this, and uh, then after nobody bought it. They backtracked and they started giving away free copies. But then it was only free copies until March. Uh, and uh, and then when that still didn't get them enough people, now they've agreed to push out 2.5 million of these. Which of which just I mean you know uh, that's a that's a lot. They've already gotten they've already distributed something like 300,000. So I mean it's not like it's a, a small app by any means. But they're trying to get to 2.5 million people, and then at least if I'm reading the company page correctly, they will start try charging about $90 for the actual Bible, the study Bible. Um, I'll believe it when I see it, but at that point, don't be too surprised. That's why I'm kind of doing this now while it's still free. I'm sorry? Well, once you have an account with them, this is always free, and it will follow you wherever you go as long as you maintain your account. So, yeah. They're they're an account based system, so they don't they don't they don't worry about distributing the software. They only worry about your account. Like even my big Bible software that I have on my computer, I can go online and use pretty much the entire resource because it's all uploaded. So anyway, all right. Well, thank you guys for coming. Hope to see you. On <laughs> it kind of does.